This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, January 15th. Gosh, hard to believe we're already in the middle of January. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters, and then we've got a lot of weather ahead of us for the next uh, week and a half or so. So let's get right to the map. Satellite image this morning shows we have a mixture of both clear skies and some clouds across the southeastern United States. In addition to that, you can see from the watch warning map that we do have uh, a good deal of dense fog advisories in effect, uh, especially along the Gulf Coast and then along the uh, stationary front we'll talk about in just a minute from South Carolina over to eastern uh, or northeastern Texas. Uh, so if you have travel plans early this morning, just take that into account. The fog should burn off by 9. The surface map features a stationary front that is uh, across the southeastern United States into a rather messy pattern over the central U.S. where that orange area features uh, a good deal of ice and uh, winter weather uh, issues. In the upper atmosphere, we have a, a good ridge over the eastern part of the country while we have a very deep trough and a closed low that is over uh, northwestern Mexico. And that is going to be the culprit in bringing us a good deal of unsettled weather for the next uh, week and a half or so. Temperatures are uh, rather cold across the northern tier of the United States uh, with single-digit values and some negative values up there in the Dakotas and uh, northern uh, Wisconsin and northern uh, Minnesota. So uh, it is very cold. And, of course, it's along that boundary between that really cold air and the really warm air along the Gulf Coast that we have the issues going on with winter weather. The uh, surface map this morning uh, shows that temperatures are a little bit lower than we've seen over the last several days. At least we're getting back into the 40s. That still is not anywhere near the uh, morning lows that we should be experiencing. The 30-year 30, uh, 30 average morning lows should be uh, in the lower 30s. Once again, the watch warning map, uh, the gray areas, uh, dense fog advisories over much of the southeastern United States. And then that mess we see in the central plains is a combination of winter weather advisories, watches, warnings, and all kinds of stuff, uh, primarily for a lot of ice in that area. QPF is very encouraging that uh, we could see on the order of one half to one inch over the next five days. Uh, this ends Friday morning. Uh, this map ends Friday morning, and that uh, looks like it's going to be both a Tuesday-Wednesday uh, event as well as uh, a Friday event uh, or a late Thursday into Friday event. Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk area outlined for uh, much of central Texas, surrounded by a marginal risk that does get into southern Oklahoma. On day two, there's a marginal risk over parts of east Texas, uh, northwestern Louisiana, and a good uh, part of uh, Arkansas. And then on day three, we have just a marginal risk along the Texas, uh, the South Texas coast between Corpus and uh, Brownsville primarily. All right, the 06 GFS model run this morning and uh, pretty active. Uh, there, there's our big low over the southwestern United States. And you can see the ridge over uh, the southeast U.S. And that's resulting in nice warm weather for us. And, of course, the stationary front lying across the uh, northern parts of the southeastern U.S. with uh, a good mess of precipitation, both uh, liquid and frozen, occurring in the central plain states. That little closed low comes out on Monday with a fairly substantial uh, trough and a closed low over uh, eastern parts of uh, Kansas there. But note that the, the major trough hangs back, and the result is, of course, a surface low coming out across southeastern Kansas uh, with a cold front that stretches down into Texas. By Tuesday, that system has moved on. It's the one in the eastern Great Lakes, but a second one is coming in, that one from the northern stream. So we're still holding back the southern stream over the southwestern part of the United States. So that will uh, slow down the frontal progress, uh, the movement of the front. So it looks like um, yeah, probably we'll have some showers Tuesday, but I think the better chance of rain is going to come late in the day, Tuesday, and into uh, early Wednesday. And taking uh, an intermediate time, this is around uh, uh, 6 p.m. on um, Tuesday, and you can see that uh, we do have some instability, so we may hear a little bit of thunder. That second um, short wave coming out of the northern stream moves by, kind of giving the, the upper ridge over us a bit of a glancing blow, beating it down just a little bit, and that may be enough push to once again uh, push the front a little further to the south, but I th still think it's likely to stall out across central Alabama. The uh, 
Ridge develops over the lower Mississippi River Valley once again as we see both the trough in the southwest beginning to come out and another one digging in off the uh, southwest coast of California. So a very complex kind of pattern, but that should probably uh, uh, stall the front out across central Alabama. So I don't think we're going to have high chances for rain on Thursday, but uh, we probably will have some chances for rain and we'll stay relatively mild, though temperatures should be back in the 60s. That first system comes out on Friday, and that certainly uh, poses a threat for us to have uh, the potential for some severe weather. You can see a surface low over southeastern Missouri with a cold front bulging across the southeastern U.S. And once again, looking at Cape values, uh, this is in the afternoon Friday, and it certainly uh, we see values in the, um, in the range probably of about uh, 500 to 800 uh, joules per kilogram. So once again, the possibility for some thunderstorms and maybe even some marginal severe weather. Uh, there's too many model differences at this point, as well as uh, it's too far out in the future to get any real good handle on it. We get a really quick ridge on Saturday, so I think we dry out on Saturday, but then on, uh, so the, the pattern is uh, dry for us, though we see a good return of southerly flow. And then uh, the pattern becomes very active for the southeastern U.S. as the major trough and the closed low come out across Texas on Sunday, and that produces a... Uh, Serious uh, surface low over Texas, over uh, north central Texas, uh, with another surface low over the uh, south central part of Louisiana and the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. And we're going to take this one day further out into voodoo country, and the biggest trough we've seen in quite some time comes out across the lower Mississippi River Valley on Monday. This certainly has the look of severe weather as a possibility for late uh, Sunday and into Monday. Again, a lot of model differences, and it's a long way out, but this certainly will require a vigilant look. And um, one of my concerns is, and, and I think the Cape uh, map for uh, a Sunday evening really uh, captures this, it looks like much of the instability will be very far south in the Gulf, uh, so it's going to be a question of how far north that instability can come. Looking further into Voodoo Country, and we see that that system goes by, and we get a really quick ridge there uh, between systems as another one is digging into the southwestern U.S. That one comes out on Wednesday the 25th, so certainly an active pattern. We go less active around the 27th as we have a broad uh, ridge over the eastern part of the country. But we do notice that uh, we tend to be headed for more troughiness around the 30th with that deep uh, trough and close low once again over the Baja California area. So no rest in the weather office. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. James Spann will be back with the next edition first thing on Monday. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blog for notes on Alabama's weather. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day. Godspeed.